I'm going to do now is basically just secure the basket um, as I would if there was a cat in it um, for transport because the doors on the end can be a little bit wobbly sometimes and um, although there's a little clip here that will often hold, uh, stop the door from opening, sometimes when the baskets have been bashed about a bit and used quite a lot the door becomes um, quite loose, it gets bent um, and the door will actually fall out and sometimes the cat can actually push the door um, by using their putting their nose at the bottom of the door and pushing it up. So what I'll tend to do with most of um, my cages and baskets is I'll use a, just a regular cable tie and then you get these like a hundred for a couple of euros basically. Um, and I'll pop that onto the end door just to hold that door closed while the cat's being um, transported. I'll usually put another one or two on, on the basket here as well, um, just to stop in case this falls out. Um, and then it's basically safe to transport because you really don't want a loose feral cat running around the back of your car. What I'm basically doing is setting up the um, the transport for the crush cage that we've got with the cat that would have the cat in it. So um, we want it to be nice and dark and quiet, but we also want it to be um, leak proof. So if the cat um, urinates or messes in any other way, it's not going to mess up the car or the van. So I'm going to basically um, use one of these bags, um, which are quite cheaply available. Use a couple of um, puppy pads or incontinence pads or kennel liners, they're known by lots of different names. Use one or two of those in here. And then my basket with my cat goes into the into the bag. It's nicely covered and contained um, and ready to actually put into the car or into the back of the van. Basically. 